Hi, um, here I am again. <laughs> and um, it takes me about 22 minutes to do a video. That's how much I allow. Um, and for some reason, it just come, ends up about that quite often on each of my videos. But I want you to all know <laughs> that even though the video is 22 minutes long, I may have been working three or four days um, on some of the same things. And and some of my videos just flow so easy and I feel, you know, when I get done with the video, I pretty much feel like I have the family kind of locked into um, where I want it to be for the time being. But I, th I thought I'd better start this little just a reminder thing so it'll catch up. And um, in in the world of genealogists, they, they have a thing called a brick wall. So a brick wall is basically... <laughs> Um, you just can't find the documentation to match up. You can't uh, depend on the information that you get. And you. It, and I always think it's kind of like you're just hitting your head against the wall all, all the time. So from the get-go, from all of this that started out many, 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 many years ago, um, you know, I've had the brick wall, which, which was with Samuel Pryor and uh, his wife, um, Isabel Wilson. And, you know, I did a video on them. I it, it kind of explained where they just kind of disappeared and I haven't been able to locate them or find them. And so that kind of hangs out there. Um, the, the other one, <laughs> well, this one that I'm going to be talking about, I just couldn't pull it all together. The information was so scattered around that I'm going to you know, give you some of the information. We can talk about what I found, but let me tell you, there's going to be some more information probably on this family and probably soon because, because I'm getting, I'm finding the pieces, but it's taken a long time um, to put them together. And then there's been one that I haven't even mentioned, but um, it was when I actually realized that one of the um, all nuts that was married to Orion was the last name and I actually got the documentation to follow all the way over to Ireland and so I was like celebrating because I I know there's places and but I feel like I have to have all the, all my ducks in a row all of my um you know reports in a way that that are really solid I think that sometimes if you go too fast when you're doing genealogy or if you take information from somebody else without really checking it out you may end up in that same boat and once you're on the wrong road sometimes it takes a while to get back back into where you were so in that particular case so, so the last name is ryan and um and i read this beautiful thing about um this valley that they came to from ireland into the um into montana and it was grassland and um i they said they had cattle and they said sheep and that, you know, they never left there. They, you know, and I think more people came from Ireland. It was, it was just, you know, they didn't want to leave any of, of uh, to go to any other states. They just felt like they made their home. But what was sad is there was a newspaper clipping I found and the, the main lady <laughs> that I was working on actually was killed by a very large ram. So, um, that was, you know, I, I don't have all the details as far as, you know, the, rep the newspaper report that I read, you know, basically said she was attacked by this large ram and that, that you know, she did die in the hospital from those uh, injuries. And, um, but I, I was curious because I know that usually farmers don't like to have cattle and um, sheep, you know, they, they eat different a different pattern and so they don't want you know especially the cattle people um they will get very angry about um the sheep farmers because the sheep will eat the grass but it'll eat the root too so then then it's barren so cattle doesn't do that cattle will munch along and eat the tops but leave the roots so that it replenishes itself so for this family from ireland that were managing both raising cattle and sheep, I thought that was kind of interesting. I want to do some more research on that. So, so I have my little you know board that I I keep <laughs> either on the board or in my mind of the things that I want to continue on and go further with. So, um, the lady, you know, the 
the one that I wanted to really talk to you about it today was, um, her name was Zella, which I've never known anybody named Zella except her. And, um, her middle name was Mary and, and she was an Allnut and, but she married an Alexander. So even that kind of sometimes mix up, you know, the McDonald's are great about, uh, you know, they, they name their kids the same name as them and all down the line. And my brother and I pulled our hair out about that a number of times trying to, you know, will the real McDonald please stand up? Um, but the story about, um, you know, that I've been working on a lot was Zella's. And I think there was, you know, sometimes it's like when I wrote about my grandfather and I had such personal um relationships with him and and history and I could you know convey that and so Zella was another one now Zella was 14 years older than my grandfather so there was 11 kids in the family and um so you wouldn't necessarily think that you know certain you know this family was just tight-knit and they kept going around and living where and working wherever they Somebody, if somebody had a job, then they'd go on. So, um, it, so the man she married, Alexander, um, was interesting because he he came from Illinois, and I don't have any Illinois connections at all. Now, you know, I have Kentucky, Missouri, and I have my certain states, but no Illinois. But when I did some research to see what was going on in Montana and where I found him as a younger person, you know, before he married Zella. Um, actually, the, it was a combination of those. that period of time is when the railroad was going through that part of Montana, kind of Montana, Idaho. It's really, really close there. But also they were having a gold rush there. So I always kind of wondered when I watched some of the TV shows or movies and stuff, you know, these adventurers, they just take off. You know, so what, where do you find their genealogy? So you have to search a little bit more um and, and try to piece it together. And, you know, I, I don't know, well, we'll see. I, you know, I'm hoping to find a little bit more document about him, but, but it was interesting because he was there and then he, then he ended up in Montana in around Hamilton where Zella would have been. So then they got married and then he took her and what kids they had, they had a total of five kids, but I don't know how many was with them, but they went back up to this area where the train was and where the gold rush was. But I think from, you know, some of the information, some, you know, you want to get information from people who have either talked to the, you know, like, so my sister had a notion and she had been uh, shared, somebody had shared information with her, something about this particular Zella having to go that back down um, and leave that and take the kids. And, um, but then she ends up in Kelso, Washington, which is where I grew up and where, you know, the, the the people just went around there a lot. And But she moved. And so it was a while before uh, her husband kind of caught up with her. But they had a few children. They had five, I think. And um, and that's been very interesting for me because I think I can't say it's a brick wall, but they're this particular part of the family, these kids took off. They went in multiple different directions. They had overseas travel, they had military, you know, but but I haven't been able to like really tie it up with a bow. I feel good about um, Zella and um, about her husband and their first son. But one of the things I wanted to share also, um, and this was for my sister, and, and me a little bit, I do remember, but there's that age difference. And so she was actually close enough when she was in grade school to walk down to Zella's house. And, you know, it was, we grew up in a small town, you know, and people knew people, but she had this small house and these kids. Now, I don't know, I never met any of her kids, but I remember her. And other than my grandma McDonald's, she you know, who, who she was the sweetest, <laughs> but Zella was a very, very kind, um, very religious. She had, I remember Jesus on the wall and, and lambs, and she was, um, a devout Christian and, and, you know, that was a big part of her life, but she led a very poor survival, really. 
And, and it was interesting how those kids didn't stay to help her out. But so my sister was, and I, I knew I could smell what she'd always feed us, but my sister and I talked about it. And she said it was a Vienna sausage, those little tiny cans of Vienna sausage, and she would cook them up. And then little tiny, tiny cans of pork and beans. And that was what we were fed by her every time we went. And, and you think about the nutritional value of it, or even think about the, the food we were eating. We were, we were very limited on, you know, we had a lot of wild meat, fish, um, you know, fruit, whatever fruit we could put up and can, and then in vegetables and very, um, it wasn't until I went to San Francisco that I realized, oh, there's French food and Italian food and pizzas and all the different wonderful things. But we, we kind of ate a very, you know, it wasn't a, a, you know, once a year, it, you know, like at Christmas time, we would get, usually it was something exotic, like a tangerine, which you never got, or I remember every once in a while we'd get like a, a, a coconut or something exotic like that. But so the big re reminder was when you can actually remember the house and remember the smell and remember Jesus being on the wall, you know, it is, it's, you feel like you know this lady a lot more than sometimes when you're just doing the um, census reports or reading the death reports or, you know, I spent a lot of time, you know, looking for, for the information of, on that level. So um, she eventually, uh, and my mom would go down there and I, I, and I guess maybe mom was visiting her with her, but she always fed us this, you know, <laughs> sausage and pork and beans. And, um, but she fell in, in her later years. And um, she fell and then she ended up in a nursing home. And then shortly after that, she passed. And um, so that particular, you know, there was a lot of funerals that as, as kids were taken to, but they were, you know, because they were my mom's aunts and uncles and cousins, and they were so much older, a lot of times we would go to these, you know, funerals and, and visit cemeteries, but it was always based on, you know, my mom's commitment to that. And sometimes I wonder if that's why I got so interested, except there's all these other facets that I was interested in also. So genealogy just puts it all together. You know, it's just like, um, for me, it's like in a candy store, you know, it's like the things that I like to pursue and research and, um, um, read maps <laughs> and all the silly things I do and, and I love to travel so you know it fits right in there so there's there was her son and this was a really interesting thing because <laughs> I, I want to read a little bit of it to you <laughs> so I don't know if you remember back but we had another family member that was in this same boat um, with one child that was, they called it being feeble minded. And um, so her first son, John Wilson Alexander, he was born in, in Hamilton in Montana and he died at the Salem Marion County in Oregon. And this is like a two page document that I printed out of the computer and it was a man actually wrote a book about, and what did he call it? it? Was so interesting. Library of Dust is what he called his book, and and he did fill in some of the gaps in regards to a lot of other stuff that I already knew about the family, but he, you know, back then they it, they called it feeble mindedness instead of like now they call it, um, you know, disable some, you know, it's it's basically people who can't read, write, talk, you know, they have, they can't take care of themselves basically. And so it was very common evidently. And so this was the second one. Now this was not, the, they weren't related as far as in the same um, people that I've been working on, but I thought it was interesting when this showed up. And this particular man who wrote the book, he actually said that uh, he did this and, and why he was talking about dust is that there is a a large um, building down in Salem, Oregon. And if if these kids or people die when they're in the facility, 
they cremate him and they put him out in this large, like a stadium building. And those ashes sit there waiting for somebody to come and get him. And, and it's, it, there's a lot evidently. So I, I did a little research with it. I went to a cemetery, talked to a man about how much it would cost if I like went and picked up the ashes and took it and put them in, in the cemetery where most of his relatives are, relatives are buried. And, and then yeah, I, I was certain I had all the documentation that, you know, I could go ahead and pick up the ashes and take them. But man, by the time I got done, it was going to be over a thousand dollars to take this person's <laughs> ashes up there. And the one thread that goes through a lot and, and you'll hear it over and over it's because it, it goes a lot. There's a lot of different things that happen when uh, in families and after you die, <laughs> what you want, what they want, what they do. I mean, it's very, it's very controversial and very private, but um, you see it like, you know, I've seen La Popari, like, you know, there's just, there's no set thing that a lot of these people do. So if somebody else is working on this family and in this record, they're going to run into this also. So one of the things that I work at a lot is to try to get connected to the DNA matches that match our family. And there's other people, you know, that aren't, you know, like I'm generations away from, but at the same time, there's probably somebody my age in that, uh, that arena that may be working and, and, may have different stories and may have pictures so that's part of why i just just am doing the videos it's not only just for the grandkids and for anybody interested in knowing what their their where they came from and and be able to learn especially to watch a video is is you know it's, it's up to date enough i think that younger people eventually will be interested in in getting that information um so, you know, he's still sitting up there as long as I know. And I th and it, actually, I was rereading this, this note, and, and it, it implied that they had changed the name of the facility a number of times, and that it's actually the, the facility now is not seeing those people. And I have a friend who has a son who has a lot of issues like that. And, you know, I've known her since she was pregnant with him, and he's like 17 now. He's, he, you know psychiatric he kind of psychiatric he can end up in the jail sometimes he's very disruptive in classrooms so he can't really you know but they try to nowadays i think there's all the things that they do um with autism and the different diagnoses and everything but i know the last time i talked to this lady her son eventually is going to be taught some kind of trade some kind of something he can do and he will live in a group home, a home environment. So, you know, so a lot of the institutions are, it's, it's, it's changed, which is <laughs> good, I think. Uh, so, so back up a little bit to uh, Zella and then um, their five, five kids. And I, I recognize the names and my sister and I have talked about the names and I thought for sure that they would just go right, bing, 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 bing. And not a one of them has did that. You know, it's been digging and digging and, and their moves and where they are. One of them that was interesting though was the second, their second son now, John, John Alexander was the one that was institutionalized. And then um, Leonard Morris, it was interesting because somehow, <laughs> <laughs> somehow he showed back up, you know, in Kelso and he was working at the plywood mill, the M&M &M plywood mill where my grandpa was working and where his um, other relatives in Kelso, they, the man, Alice and her husband, both were working at, at the plywood mill. Now there was lots of mills. There's still quite a few mills um, there, you know, in that area. A lot of them have changed hands, and I, you know, I know that I was able to get the chart notes and everything about his disability, my grandfather's from from when he was really really hurt bad in um, in the workers' comp and those papers. So I keep looking to see if these people, you know, so far they have it, you know, other than I think there's one man who lost a finger, but it didn't 
it didn't really re relate to his job necessarily. But to me, again, it's that interesting how it just kind of pops up. And it's not close from Montana, the part of the Montana they are, to end up in my old hometown was it really um, very interesting to me. But but this close knit, and even there were 14 years, when you think of a brother and sister that are 14 years difference in how they 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 did this. They moved together, they socialized together, they had went to the funerals together. Um, you know, they they hung on tight to um this part of the family. And I do have more all nuts coming up. Because <laughs> they had eleven and my grandfather was eleven. I think I did like four or five maybe. Um I've thought about, you know, especially if there's a request of if somebody else does respond to, I put many feelers out, you know, emails to people that telling them that what I'm doing and who I'm, who I'm working on. And so uh, over the years, I've had really good, um, some written notice, some telephone conversations more re recently. And I even visited the, the one, well, there were several people I visited in Montana. And so I, I like that. I, I, you know, that's another part of me that, some know, I know there's some of you know it too well, that I just can become like a social butterfly and, and um, put all of it together and, and the people fascinate me. So it's been a little harder with the pandemic because, um, you know, I, I really have been isolated first in um, Idaho. And then when I've had my van about a year on the road, um, during the pandemic, and then I settled here in Denver, but my lease is going to be up here, and um, so you know I'm looking at what all I want to do after that. But right now it's great because I I have my genealogy, I have my jewelry, you know I jump up and somebody wants a necklace, I finish it, and um, I continue to enjoy that. And then whenever I get of course to get, get to see my son. And his kids, you know, that's kind of like the highlight here. But I, I don't think I will be <laughs> living in Denver um, after my lease is up, that's for sure. So um, we just hit the 22 mark, 22-minute <laughs> mark. And I think that, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to kind of throw out there so people can realize, you know, I, I say it over and over again. And... And I hear it when I join clubs and go to take classes. I, you know, all genealogists talk about this. But but I got this piece of paper, and it, it's a birth certificate. <laughs> and it has all the information that Zella was the mother, um, the father was the Alexander, has a date on it. And then it has this name that I don't find anywhere. It just says Herbert Alexander. I, I I don't know. And it doesn't show up on on the computer that somebody else is working on it. So that was kind of another mystery to me. Now that's you know place of well, yeah, this is the place the mother and father were that you know, a lot of these records are repeat themselves, but like you know, he came from Illinois and and she came from Missouri, so We'll be going in that direction. And then there was one other thing that was, um, oh, I know what it was. I was doing a, a census. Censuses are, I mean, I haven't found anything that, that is absolutely has not had a mistake in it. I, I have to say that, you know, it doesn't matter. I have not seen anything that I can totally, totally count on because there's human air, there's all the different things. But the census records give you a lot of information. They also tell, say whether the person, uh, what their occupation is. They say um, whether they can read or write, or there's a lot of information on there. And you can kind of see, you can even see who their neighbors are and and how much land they had and birthdays and stuff like that. So, you know, and so this Herbert, he doesn't show up on any census report. But then the interesting thing was on, on Zella was that um, there was a point in time where her husband wasn't there, but it said his, her, her brother-in-law. 
to me, which says if she had this, his name was Tom, if she had Tom listed as a brother-in-law, but I go to I go to who she was married to, and there's no Tom. Now, there's a Tom that was, the father was a Tom, but, but you can kind of see, I mean, it could be a mistake, it could be, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I think my <laughs> time is up for today, and <laughs> we'll see if I just eat some dinner and, you know, my brain gets going with whatever I'm doing. You know, I watch a movie or something like that. And my brain's still kind of going to, uh, you know, <laughs> but um, it, it, it's just great. Really. I feel like, I feel like when I'm talking to the screen or talking to, I feel like I'm talking to you or whether you're in an amphitheater. And I used to give a lot of presentations in those old fashioned uh like it in medical school and they had stadium seats and I'd be up there front and there'd be like a hundred people and I would be, you know, training them on something. And so sometimes I feel like that too. Sometimes I feel like, you know, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I am a little bit isolated, but it does really, it's really fun for me to do these videos. So let me know if you have any questions or uh, any requests or yep. Yeah. Otherwise, bye. Okay, so I didn't I didn't quite <laughs> stop the stop it yet. And, and there's a guy I watch it quite often, and he's really good. He's a lawyer, and he'll stop it and he'll say, "Oh, I forgot something." So anyway, so I was I, I I wanted to say something about my necklace. So this is a piece of lapis lazuli that came out. Um, there was a man who his whole life he was going into the countries and and finding specimens, and he was really up in years. And um, and and I haven't seen him in three years because of the pandemic. But whenever I see him, and he usually remembers, it's me that bought his his best last one that he would ever have. And then it's it's beaded um, with the lapis. But then I also has turquoise, and I th I like the combination of the turquoise. But it's it's not for sale. <laughs> it's just some of my pieces that I I keep for myself. But it, it gives people an idea of the type of work I do. Anyway, now I'm going to sign off. <laughs> uh, have the rest of a good day. <laughs> Bye.